have to thank the Cameroon Cardiac Society. Yeah. Okay. Thank giving you. me the opportunity to give this talk on pulmonary arterial hypertension in congenital heart disease, the invasive approach. I have nothing to disclose to this presentation. The outlines of this presentation, we had it already from the predecessor. The definition, the classification, she highlighted very well for us. Pathologies that the invasive cardiologist is expecting to increase the pulmonary arterial uh, flow. The diagnosis as well, she said it very well and clear. And then what is uh, our main objective here is to, guide, to give the guidelines of invasive approach. And then we have some case scenarios, some cases scenarios, and then we will give you a conclusion. What we had, we had about 20 millimeters of mercury. But for the invasive cardiologist, when you are at the cat lab, a pulmonary arterial hypertension is a serious condition characterized with increased vascular pressure with the mean pulmonary arterial pressure more or equal to 25 millimeters of mercury. To easy the classification, not going deeply in the hemodynamic and we precise the capillary wage pressure. That is where is our target. So we have the pre-capillary pulmonary arterial hypertension, the capillary pulmonary arterial hypertension, and then the post-capillary. You take it as that, as simple as that. So which pathologies are really giving the attention for the invasive cardiologists? We have the, the ventricular septal defect, the patent ductus arteriosus, and the atrial septal defect. We can see that those pathologies are the one that we have the flow either from left to right and when you have a suspicion of pulmonary arterial hypertension, you have the, the flow that is going from right to left. The other pathologies, she mentioned them very well also. We have the left heart diseases, the chronic lung diseases, the chronic thromboembolic events, and there are some particularities where we have unclear mechanism that can also, not defined, that can also lead to pulmonary uh, hypertension. The diagnosis, you cannot take a patient to the cardiac catheterization room without having an idea on echocardiography. So it's mandatory to have first orientation on the echo color doppler uh, assessment then the key of the king to have to give you the diagnosis is the right heart catheterization as she said but the right heart catheterization is limited in this approach because if you have to evaluate the pulmonary vascular resistance which is giving you at least to, 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 to give an answer to your surgeon whether the patient is indicated to have a closure of the defect or no. So you need to do another left catheterization, not only the right catheterization. Very important. We can see now the cardiac catheterization room where everything is, is passing inside here. This is the general hospital in Douala, their new uh, uh, cat lab uh, room. So you can see what I just uh, spoke some few minutes ago, the right heart catheterization plus the left heart catheterization give you the evaluation of the pulmonary valve, pulmonary vascular resistance. So at cat lab, what, uh, which answer are we giving to the surgeon? We have pulmonary vascular resistance less than three wood unit is the normal value. From three to five wood unit, moderated elevated, and more than five unit you have highly elevated. 
So you can see already now that the patient that goes to the second category of three to five and five are borderline to have either percutaneous closure or surgical closure. Now I have some cases that we discussed already yesterday. Technical approach in the, in the cardiac catheterization to, to give the reversibility of pulmonary arterial hypertension. Can you click in the image and let it flow? Click on the, the image and then you will play. It's video. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we yes, so we saw this. No. Previous, the, back to the image, back to the image, please. Back to the image. Retourner sur l'image. Précédente. Précédente. Oui. You see? So we have this large pattern ductus arteriosus. Next, please. Next, suivant. Nous avons vu, et we saw, please, we saw, please, this uh, occlusion test yesterday. So you can occlude the PDA with a catheter monitoring the pulmonary arterial, arterial pressure. That gives you the answer if this pattern ductus arteriosus is closable or not. Next. So we have a, a positive response. Click, and then we close this PDA with Amplasa total occluder type 1. Yeah. Next image. The invasive, the vascular reactivity testing, we spoke already about the pulmonary va va vascular resistance. Next. This is the innovative approach in the treatment of pulmonary uh, arterial hypertension. You can see the devices, the new in the market, without any other, uh, commentary about it, we have here a, an atrial flow regulator, meaning that when you implant this ASD device with the hole, you have the regulating flow that is going to decrease the left atrial pressure and giving a support uh, in terms of uh, uh, reducing uh, the, the, uh, the, the left arterial pressure and here equally you can see uh, the perforation the hole at the middle of the of the, the, the device another image where the invasive cardiologist you can see here an atretic pulmonary pulmonary valve here you don't see any flow next we see we dilated the pulmonary valve. Next, this patient was having an atretic pulmonary valve and atrial septal defect. So you can see the flow at the end of this uh, dilatation. Why am I showing this image? It's not a case of pulmonary arterial hypertension, but dilating this vessel at this age, you can increase what we call the post-dilation reperfusion of the pulmonary, the pulmonary vessels here. So you can induce by doing this procedure, uh, by increasing the pulmonary artery pressure. You have two minutes. I'm concluding already, yeah. Next, next, next. In conclusion, we have to say that the novel approach of releasing the right ventricle and the left ventricle dysfunction and limit, uh, giving the, the limitation of death that can occur if the, there is no uh, management in the pulmonary arterial hypertension, the arterial flow regulation can be an alternative and have to represent as the bridge to the heart transplant because most of these patients finally either they are dying or they have to go for heart transplant. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you.